Hello. In this video, we're going to go over how a game loop works for Raylib. So what exactly is a game loop? A game loop is a common structure in most games that handles all of the input, game logic, and drawing for a game on a per frame basis. In a normal game, what happens is we start up our code, we then go into a game loop, during this game loop, we are always asking if we want to keep running or quitting. For most of the game, we want to keep running. So we, the first thing we do is we handle our input. Then we update any of our game state, such as moving players or detecting if things get shot. Uh, then we begin our drawing. Then we draw everything in our game. So we'll draw all the players, all the enemies, everything you want to do, including any user interface. Then we'll end our drawing and go back to our game loop again which will cause the frame to refresh on the screen. And then we'll ask our question again if we want to quit. If we don't, which is most of the time, we'll go through and do this whole thing again for the next frame. When the game is finally over, the loop will break and we'll go into our shutdown code where we'll clean up. So here we have an example of a game loop uh, in some Raylib code. It's a minor variation of the main demo that Raylib has. So it has all the sections that we saw previously. We set up our game by initializing the window and setting some initial data. Uh, here we're using a Boolean for show text to tell us whether we're not whether or not we're going to show text. Then we actually have our game loop. That is this big while loop. The condition that says whether we should quit or not is window should close. That detects if someone presses the escape key or presses the close box on the window. Uh, when they do that, this loop will end and break out. Uh, so the very first thing we do is we check for our input. So we check and see if a key is down and set our Boolean to equal that. So if a key is, the space bar is down, we will, uh, have our show text to true, otherwise it'll be false. There's no actual game logic in this demo, so we don't do anything here. Uh, then we're gonna actually draw our game. So we begin drawing and clear our background. We just draw some text here to show that we can draw text. Then we check our Boolean that we tested in our input section to see if we wanna draw some additional text that says whether or not the space bar was pressed. Then we end drawing. This loop will run for the entirety of the game until someone presses escape or the close box. Then when it's done, close window will be called. So if we run this, we end up with our text that we had. And if we hold the space bar down, we get our text for pressed. So we're reading input and we're drawing every frame. So why is this important? Um, the game loop is made for games and animations. It is not event based. Most normal applications use events. So when the user clicks a button or when the OS tells them to do something such as a window was resized, an event is given to the application and then the application handles that. With a game, you're always animating things. Something is always being drawn on the screen. So in this case, we're always drawing something every frame and every frame starts from a fresh screen. So we don't have events that tell us what to do, we're basically going all the time saying draw something and checking to see if the input has changed by doing input polling. Uh, the input state is basically constant for every frame. So you can check for um, if a key is pressed or down multiple times during the same frame uh, because checking for it doesn't change its state. It's not an event. Um, we do all of this and build up our entire frame. And then at the end, when end drawing is called, that submits everything to the GPU for drawing. And then Raylib also updates all of the input during end drawing. So it gets it ready for the next frame with the keys that were pressed for the next frame. Um, because of this, you can't actually block the main thread of a Raylib game with sleep or anything because everything happens in the main thread. Uh, if you don't call end drawing, then no input happens, no events are processed on the back end, um, and Windows thinks your game has stopped. So you always need to be processing some kind of frames during your game. So here we have a slightly more advanced example uh, that shows how input is constant throughout the frame. Uh, we're doing the same thing that we did before, except for now we're checking two states. In this case, we're checking is key down twice in the same frame, and that's perfectly fine. 
calling is key down the first time does not clear the state so that is key down would return false the second time. You can check any of the key states anytime. The same goes for the mouse position, any controllers or inputs. Um, everything is pulled and stored by Raylib. So you basically get a little snapshot in time of the input state and you can query that. So as you can see here, we're doing pretty much the same thing, except for we're changing the color of the fixed text based on the state of the spacebar, in addition to showing some other text or not. So because the game loop is control, basically controls the frame rate, uh, we need to talk about frame rate limits. Uh, by default, the frame rate is unlimited. So uh, Raylib will try to draw as many frames as possible. Uh, this can be many thousands of frames per second. Um, you can use the function draw FPS to show you how many frames you're getting right now. Uh, you can also call set target FPS to set a cap on the frame rate. This is a good idea um, because there's no real point in having more frames than your monitor can display. Your monitor is going to have some natural refresh rate. So having your game run at 2000 frames per second and drawing 2000 frames per second is kind of pointless because it won't, um, all those extra frames are just going nowhere. So you generally want to set a target FPS. Um, what that will do is that will set a cap for the FPS you have. Your actual frames per second could be lower than your target, such as if you're doing some very complex computations when drawing, it could take a long time to compute what to draw on your frame, and that could lower your frame rate below your target. So the target FPS is not a hard guarantee, it's just an upper limit. Um, also, if you do unlimited frames per second, um, it actually makes the game run at 100% CPU. So if you're on a laptop or a mobile device, that could totally drain the battery. So a target FPS is always a good thing to set. You can also enable VSync, and this will cause the system to synchronize your frames with the refresh of your monitor. This happens at the hardware level, uh, so you have no control, direct control over it in your game, uh, but it tells the driver basically to wait until the next frame is ready to be drawn before returning true from end drawing. So here's another variant of our example. Uh, during setup, we've enabled VSync, which is the VSync hint. Uh, it's a hint because not all monitors and video card combinations technically support VSync. Uh, if you have like a generic monitor and your video card doesn't know what it is, uh, it may not support VSync. It doesn't happen very often anymore, but it is something that could happen. So what we're also doing is setting a maximum target frames per second of 144 frames per second. Uh, in this case, basically the VSync will override the target FPS. Uh, so we'll never get to this cap and that's fine. So in this case, we're gonna use a little Boolean for blink equaling true. And what we're gonna do is every frame, we're gonna to toggle this blink flag back and forth. So if we run our game, we can come over here and we can see that our screen is flashing 60 times per second, sometimes 59 because we're in debug, uh, but it is synchronized with the screen. If we kill that and turn off these and let it run unlimited, um, you'll notice we're getting much more frames per second, but you can see the flash is sort of, um, glitchy and uh, not consistent. That's because an uncapped frame rate, as you can see, varies wildly. We'll go from 4,000 to 2,000 to 3,000. Um, so not having a frame rate limit can be wildly different. Uh, the other problem with really high frame rates is, is that the time between frames becomes very, very small. Uh, when that time gets so small, you actually run into floating point um, issues where the floating point values can't hold that number. You have floating point inconsistencies. So running at extremely high frame rates is kind of silly. A common thing that's asked is how do you show and hide things? Um, a lot of people come from other game engines where once you add something to the scene, it's there forever until you remove it. Um, Raylib is not an engine, therefore it does not manage any kind of entity state for you. It's your job to determine what you draw each frame. So the most common thing to do when someone says, how do I hide something is, if you want to hide it, just don't draw it. 
It's your job to not draw it. So your code must keep track of any state data that you need to show or hide things. Uh, we showed that a little bit before in the examples, but we'll show it a little more here. So what we have is, again, our example. We're still frame rate limited because that's just a good idea. And what we're going to do is we're going to load a texture for a robot. We're going to give the robot a position, and we're going to give keep a Boolean that tells us whether or not the robot should be visible or not. What we're going to do then is during our input stage, we're going to check and see if the key is pressed. Uh, this means that the key was not down on the last frame and down on this frame. So if someone presses space, we're going to toggle our little robot from uh, either visible or invisible or invisible to visible. Uh, then we're going to go through and we choose to draw him if she's visible or not. So if we run this, we've got our little robot. If we press space, that toggles the Boolean, and now we don't draw the robot, and we draw another message instead. So we're keeping track of what to draw, when and where, and every frame we update that and choose what to draw. So we can toggle this back and forth, um, and then it's it's just our job to track that. There's nothing Raylib will do to help you track what to draw or what not to draw. So next we're gonna talk about animation. Um, basically animation is moving where something is on the screen over time. So again, since Raylib is not an engine, your code must determine where everything is drawn on every frame. So if you wanna do any kind of animation or motion, you must move where something is drawn over time. Uh, the best way to do this is to actually use the time functions in Raylib. Get frame time will tell you how long it's been since you last drawn in seconds. Um, this is much better to use than just adding a fixed amount per frame. You may think, oh, I have 60 frames per second, so if I move one pixel every frame, I'll move 60 pixels per second. Uh, the problem is, is that frame rates are not always consistent. As I mentioned, your frame rate may actually be below your frame rate limit. So if you're moving one pixel every frame and your frame rate drops from 60 to 30 frames per second, then your motion is half speed. So what you always want to do is use get frame time because that will take give you a bigger number the lower the frame rate gets. So if your frame rate drops from 60 to 30, get frame time will be doubled and therefore you'll be able to move farther for each frame because each frame took more time. So we're extending our example here. We've got our robot. We've still got our position. We have an additional robot speed, which we're going to define as 200 pixels per second. So for every second of motion, the robot's going to move 200 pixels. So we have our visible and visible state here too, but what we're gonna also do is track some motion. So we have a vector two, which we're gonna initialize to zero, and then we're gonna go through and check the W, S, A, and D keys to figure out what axes we're mo moving in. So if we're moving in X, we're gonna go either plus or minus in X based on the key. If we're moving in Y, we're gonna go plus or minus Y based on the key. Now we actually have something to update in our game section, so we're going to move our robot based on the input. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our motion vector, we're going to scale it, which will take all the components of this vector and multiply it by this floating point value. We're going to get our frame time, which will be how long it's been since the last time we drew, times our robot speed. So the results of this is how far we need to move in both X and Y just for this frame. So then we're gonna add that to our robot position and update him based on how far he needed to move for this frame based on this speed and this time. So this will work at any frame rate, no matter what frame rate we have, she's gonna move at 200 pixels per second. Then we come through and just draw again. So we're moving again. And now you can see there's a very nice smooth motion regardless of the frames per second. Um, if we press space, it will still hide, but we're still moving this thing that we're drawing even though we're not drawing the robot because we're still updating the robot position. 
So that's the basics of the game loop and a very simple example of time-based motion. Uh, if you enjoyed that, uh, please look at our other videos because we make more sometimes. Um, and if you uh, need any help, please come on to the Raylib Discord using the link below. Thank you.